Okay, good morning, everyone. This is Office Manager Sammy. Today, we are going to talk about residential lease. Okay, so we talk about the two parts. The first one, you represent the tenant. Second part, you represent the landlord. So that's a two different scenario. And the most of the case, when we get to our license, we just start for the residential lease. Cause the first one, residential lease is easy to start and uh, you don't have a too much pressure. Just bring the, find the property with the tenant, bring them to see the property, prepare the offer and uh, get a sometimes a very quick closing. Then you earn some money. So that's very quick and fast to start. And uh, after that, Maybe you have uh, uh, some client, they ask you to do the listing, be a landlord part to do the listing. Yeah, so let's start for the tenant part first. And the first, so if you get some, uh, get your license, usually people say, oh, where can I start my business? I don't have a client. And usually we just search, uh, rent wanted Toronto, let's just say rental wanted Toronto, and you will find a whole bunch of the website. So I'm not going to check every single website, just to give you the, bring you some idea. You will find someone they're looking for the place and you can contact them to ask for help. They don't need to pay you money because we help them to find the unit, find the house, and the landlord will pay the fees. So that's why, you know, when you get your license, the easy, fast way is to find, is there anyone they're looking for the place in the website, the rental wanted, and uh, contact to them, find the place. So first one, we, uh, we know where we can find someone. Second one, we go to MLS and then we do search. Uh, let's just say there's someone they may looking for the house, maybe Markham, I just random to pick for the training purpose. You can find it anywhere in Toronto, in Ontario. So if they said I'm looking for the house in the Markham and I will go to residential freehold lease. So I will use matrix as a sample Right now we use a two, three system. One is a wrong, one is a stratus. Another one is a matrix. So I'm going to use a matrix as a training uh, demonstration and search residential free hold lease. Of course, if you're looking for the condo, residential condo, residential condo lease. So choose the right category. We can find the result, right result, residential, Lease freehold lease, and you can quickly go to map search. And from the map search, find the where you want to look for. Okay, let's just see. You know, for the training purpose, I just go to do the Wismer area, and you can use a polygon to find the area, and then we go to the result. So let's just say they're looking for detached and uh, they're looking for, uh, let's just say two garage. And there's only five results. Let's go to result. The price is from the 4,000 to 1,000. What, why is it so different? Cause you know, 1,300 usually they only rent for the basement. It's not a whole unit. And then we go to check every listing we see this is 1,300, it's only for the second floor. It's not for the whole uh, entire property. So we can ignore it. This is for entire property. And this is for the residential freehold lease. It's 4,100, they have a three bedroom. You can check all the information and check right now tenant living there. So if your tenant is looking for quick close, that means before August 18, 
they cannot move in. So the position date is very important. If you see they have attendance, usually 24 hours notice, see 24 hours notice must be provided. And uh, we go next one. And this is for the same entire property. And also this is for vacant. If vacant, that means you can move in anytime. Sometimes rent tenant can move in tomorrow. Even tomorrow is a Sunday. So the lease closing day can be anytime because there's no lawyer getting involved. So can quick close. Okay, let's just say this property, uh, you found is a good property and you can book appointment from broker B and bring the buyer to see the property. Uh, sorry, bring the tenant to see the property. After you see the property, tenant said, I really like the property. I want to prepare the offer. So now we go to next step. Before you prepare the offer, contact the listing agent. Usually they have their cell phone and ask a listing agent, I see your property. Uh, I just wanted to prepare the offer. Before I prepare, prepare the offer, is there anything you want to let me know? Or is this property still available? You know the lease, sometimes the agent is really busy. They don't take time to update uh, accordingly. That means uh, you bring the buyer, bring the tenant to see the property. They like the property. You prepare the offer. And the then the leasing agent told you, oh, we leased the yesterday. We leased the last week. So just waste your time. To save your time, before you prepare the offer, even before you're showing, you need to call the listing agent make sure everything is uh, uh, ready. And then we are going to prepare the offer. So now we are going to start prepare the offer from the web form. You see the web form icon is right there. Just we click. And once you click prepare the offer, they will pop up the window and the name is the transaction name and the template we're looking for 03A lease offer freehold. We have a lease offer condo. We have a lease offer freehold. So now we go lease offer freehold. And this is for freehold property. And then we click create transaction. And then we go to forms on the right. So we need a agreement to lease. We need a confirmation form. We need a rental application. We need a standard lease. So this one, two, three, four, four form, you need to send it to listing agent. But the 372 is a representation agreement, agency agreement. So you can keep this form in your file. Okay, let's start for the offer to the listing brokerage. The agency form is really simple and easy. So I will not take a time to uh, go through the agency form, but uh, you can, you know, when you get a chance, maybe play around, open the form, take a look. So let's go to the first form, 400 agreement to lease, click. And date, always today's date, tenants, just uh, check who is a tenant. Usually it's like a couple, they have a kids, just put the husband and the wife name if the couple. And if they have a kids, just put the kids name in the rental application. Okay, let's just say I will use the fake name. And, uh, and just a fake name for training purpose. And the address, the landlord name we have. And the next one is the term. Term, that means when or how long you can rent. So we go, let's just say we can, uh, the rent start the next month, April, I'm sorry, August 1st. Usually the first day, August 1st. And the term is for one year. And the rent, for the rent, usually we, you know, there's not too much room to negotiate. 
So usually we just give the full price because usually leasing agents are busy, counter offer, send back. So most of the case, we just give the uh, full price for 150. $4,150. And because every month, first day is the pay day. So we go first day is the payment, pay rental payment date. If you go any day, like 15, so the 15th day is the first day, the 15th. And the deposit is upon acceptance. Usually when we uh, accept the offer, we give the deposit within 24 hours. And the deposit pay to listing brokerage. We found the listing brokerage name. And then we go copy. Make sure you put the right listing agent's brokerage name. And the deposit is the first and the last month. First and last. So deposit amount will be eight. 1,300 first and the last month. And the use is for residential. And the include the service and the cost. The service and the cost, that means the gas, the tenant will pay gas. And then there's no oil. Electricity will be paid by tenant, hot water tank rental tenant, water and the sewage tenant and a cable TV tenant, condominium fee does not apply, we leave blank. Garbage removal, we leave blank. So this is basically the landlord pay property tax, they pay home insurance. Other than that, everything will be paid by tenant. Parking, because this is the uh, whole house, rent this is the one two garage and they have a include the parking space so we will see two and t a r parking Because they were exclusive use for the tenant, this tenant only, not to share with anyone. And then irrevocable by tenant. 11.59, usually we give 24, 59, 24 hours notice. If we send the offer today, so will be until tomorrow, July 7th. And uh, 11, we don't need to do anything. And all the way to Schedule A. Schedule A, our office, we already have helped you to pre-built pre -built in the Schedule A. So you don't need to think about which schedule I should use. Just to quickly go through every single class and make sure this is suitable for this uh, suitable for this uh, offer only. So tenant pay landlord deposit within 24 hours. That's good. And also the standard list will be signed. And the next one, tenant volunteer will to provide the tempo the check and the $300 key deposit. This is uh, normal. And the next one, this is agreement to lease condition upon landlord. Check the tenant credit within two days, bank banking days. It's normal. No smoking, no more, and another painting. Uh, yeah, that's good. And the tenant should have the lease premise clean at the end of the lease term. That's no more. Tenant agreed to register our utility account. Yes, it's no more. You see, there's a lot of the clause so we don't need to do. We don't need to modify or delete. Unless you think some clause you really want, you can change, modify, you can add. So other than that, you know, we'll quickly go, go through the everything. There's nothing we need to do. 
everything is already already there, pretty normal standard class. Okay, so we have a little bit of space on the back. If you need to add anything, just go 24, 25, 27. If no, like this is the pre, you know, standard class for the all situations. So this form we finish and just like a few minutes, where it's quick. And then we go next form. Next form is called the confirmation. It means the two brokerage working together. And the listing brokerage is the landlord and the call operating brokerage represent the tenants and the call operating brokerage will be paid as per MLS. So this form is done. See how easy. We just need to check the one, number one listing brokerage they are represent the landlord. We check number four called operating brokerage represent the tenant and the fees will be paid as per MLS. So that's a 324 form we finish. And the last uh, form is a four tenant rental application. The rental application is for, you know, tenants they need a, you need to go through with the tenant because there's lots of information we have to ask tenant. So the best way is to meet with your tenant in the office, in the anywhere like coffee shop, whatever, just to check with them and find the answer to fill this form. And this is a start from the August 1st and the rent is $4,150. And the payment will be every first day. And the license number. And the, what is the occupation? Second attendant, date of birth, uh, driver's license number, and the occupation. So number three, other occupant. Occupant maybe is their Kids, maybe their son, their daughter, maybe their parents. So just write down the name, relation, and the age. So you don't need their this son, uh, their signature. Just need their information. So you have to ask them if they have any pets. If yes, what kind of the pet? So this is will be a. Uh, you should always ask them first. Next one is last two years residence. It's a straightforward. Just write down where they live and from when to when and who is the landlord and what is the contact number for the landlord. And also the tenant employment history, where they work in the past, you know, at least the past two job to employment. And the name of the Bank, bank account. So usually some tenant, they just concern the personal privacy. They don't want to provide all oh, my account number. And uh, so you, this is not like a mandatory. You don't need to write down the account number, uh, checking account number, saving account number. Usually we just ask them, oh, they said that maybe uh, let's just say TD Bank, we just write down TD Bank. So you don't need to write down the more details. And the financial obligation. So if they have a car, like a, you know, lease, or is there any other financial obligation? You can write down how much the because the reason is landlord wanted and if they have a ability to pay the rent based on their income. And a personal reference, you can see who is the person at least known two and more years you can put as the reference. And of course, their automobile, their vehicle, their car, just uh, you can write down roughly. You don't need to put more details like a license number. You don't need to put all those. And then that's it. So this is a rental application. It's a little bit of complicated form. But however, if you go through with your tenant, 
should be done very quickly. And uh, this is a form we already finished. And uh, we, because the time is, uh, we need to do it for the listing, how to prepare listing. So I'm not going to spend the time for the, uh, uh, it's called the authentic sign. So once you finish all the form, you need to go through for the authentic sign. We have a lot of the training for the, you know, authentic sign training. So hope you can take time to watch the authentic sign training. So we will stop here for the uh, residential lease to help the tenant. And I know you have a lot of questions. So we will stop the training at uh, 11.45. And after 11.45, remember, take down your question for now. I'll put it in the chat box. So I will discuss with uh, all, the, all, the, all the questions if you have after 11.45. So this is for Liz. If you are helping the tenant, we prepare the other forms. And then now we quickly to the listing. So in the different, uh, different position, right now we need help the landlord. Uh, I just, uh, you know, random to find the property because of the property I know. So that's why I, I want to use this property as a sample. You can do any property if you wanted to do the listing for lease, any property, doesn't matter. And uh, this property, let's just see the tenant, the landlord that they told you, I have a unit, condominium unit. I want to ask you to help me to list, help me to find the tenant. So the first step we will go is, we go web form. You see the web form is under tools. You see web form authentic sign just right here. It's web forms. If you go to web forms, we click create transaction. To fast, just goes a little bit of slow. You see create transaction. And uh, we just needed the transaction name. The name is a property. Uh, address. You to list this unit. I'm going to create transaction and uh, create a transaction. I go to template the template 03 you see the 03d lease listing condo condo town listing but if this lease listing for freehold you see they will going to focus on the listing lease for condo and after first and the second one you see this is a mandatory mandatory we have a you know, the icon is mandatory. Other than that, don't touch any information. Otherwise, you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot create a transaction. This is the first and the last if you are doing the, doing the listing. We go create. And after you create, we go to the forms. You see, we need a one listing agreement for lease form 272. This is new trash update, new form. And uh, we use the designate representation agreement for lease. And the next one, we need MLS data form. But however, we will not waste the time to duplicate, do the duplicate job. We will go to Toronto MLS. We uh, finish all the draft. We can download the draft to authentic sign, let a ten landlord to sign it. So this form, we just leave here for the in case, but the most of the case, we will not take time to fill this form for here. And the next form is recall info guide. This form is replaced the previous one is called a, uh, working with a realtor. We get a continuous some agent ask where is working with a realtor, no more working with a realtor. 
Rico info get replaced. And the, the next one is Rico uh, Ontario standard lease. So this is only if you have an offer, except other than that, we only need a one, two form. One is 272 leasing agreement. Second form, Rico info get. And also the MLS data, we don't use this one. We use the MLS draft, download the draft. Okay, let's start. First one, listing agreement. And this is a straightforward form, land out the name. We still use a fake name for training purpose. And if there's two land out, we just put a two. If there's only one landlord, we put a one. So for this training purpose, I just put a one person to save the time. And this is the agent's name, it's your name. You can put your name here. And the, this is the address, 386. And the Young Street unit, the city, and the Ontario and the postcode. Postcode, we see if there's any list before in the MLS. Uh, 386. So there is a list history. So we can find the history from MLS. It was listed before, and then we copy the postcode. And the commencing day. Commencing day is when you want this listing put on the MLS. So you can send the listing today, but you can post on the MLS next week, next month. So that cannot, can, can be a not the same day. So you can send today for the listing. The commenting day is you wanna put on the MLS date. So let's say now is July and we could, we, we can get everything ready. Let's say maybe July 15. It's a two weeks later and a 12 o'clock morning, we will put on the MLS, but we can send the listing today. And the expire date, at least two months, 60 days. So 60 days, that means uh, July, August, September. So we go the uh, end of the September, it's more than 60 days. And uh, the price, so how much the price you can list? Usually we can quickly go to the uh, same building to do the quick CMA. Let's go to the same building. Before we go to the same building, we see this is a two bedroom. The square footage is a seven to seven ninety nine. Okay, we check this building. We take this out and we check a list, recently re list, two bedroom, seven and the 7.99, so eight. They have an eight list. Mm, they have a parking. I will check one parking. And uh, I will check with from the most recently. Sold, sold the date. July, is it July? July 4th. Okay, so this is the most recently list. It's $3,050. And let's check the another one, 3,500. Check another one, 3,300. 3,100, 2,900. Okay, so they have a, all kinds of the different numbers. Uh, I will go maybe six months too long, maybe go to 90 days. Only have a three results. And then from these three, 
I will quickly do CMA. From the CMA, you see the average price is uh, 3,300. But you can do quick lease for lower price. Also, you can do maybe longer time to lease for the higher price. So based on this uh, quick CMA, I will suggest the landlord listing price is 3,300 if they want to list as like a normal situation. So I will put 3,300 for the listing price for lease. And uh, then we go quickly continue for the commission. Commission is one month rent, one month rent. And the uh, call up, that means the tenant's agent, they will get a half month, half month rent. Total one month, call up agent get a half month, we get a half month. And uh, the rest, we don't need the rest information. We just leave a blank. So the leasing agreement is done. And uh, the next form is recall in for get. We still have a 15 minutes to finish the listing. OK, recall in for get is really simple. Just go last page. You see the signature for the agent and for the landlord. That's it. So we finished these two forms. Now we need to finish the very, very difficult form, MLS data. Okay, we go to MLS, we go to add edit. From the add edit, we open the new tab. And because we have the previous, remember we have a previous list You know, fortunately, there's a lead previous listing we have. We can copy the MLS number. Some agent may say, oh, the unit I want to list, maybe it's not list, no listing history from MLS. What can I do? So if there's no listing history, usually I will suggest you check with them. See, this is a 4516. Maybe you can check, uh, just, uh, you know, end by 16. See how many listings end by 16. Just end by same number, like a 15, 16, whatever the unit number. If you use extra, that means they have an end by exactly match 16. So usually the same end number will be the same layout. Usually this is not 100%, but most of the case, yes. So if yes, we can use the same layout, same layout to do the call on the listing. Okay, for this case, we have a fortunately we have exactly, you know, the same same unit. We just copy the MLS number. When you copy, we go to add edit. From the add edit, we go to edit listing. Usually we add a listing. Add a listing, that means you start for new, but the edit listing, we are going to colon, control V, and you found the listing from Tonto MLS database. We will going to use here, it's called colon, colon listing. And I check the information, the brokerage is correct. The agent's name is correct. This is the condo, condo apartment, uh, street number, street name, and the unit number. Everything is good, then I create. So when you create, you are going to pull out 90% information from the previous listing. So you can quickly double check for everything, like a row number, pin number, area, municipality, community, street number. So all of those, I will quickly double check. Uh, here, the property management, management company. 
I need to find out. So this is a uh, ICC property management. I just copy. And uh, yeah, that looks like a good, but uh, there's another easy way. You see, we can click validate. The validate will system will help you to check. If you click validate, they will give you where you where is the missing information. So we see here we have a missing information. What a friend? No. If you check a no, that means that they will disappear for the warning. We go next one. You see last. Why last? Because the reason is that this is a new listing, and some information they cannot copy from the previous. And this is go to July 15, expire date by September 30th, position date. And if you ask a landlord, when can you give the unit to the new tenant? If the landlord, landlord told you, oh, you know what? The date must on, let's say September 1st, because right now the tenant living there. The last day is last day is August 31st. So September 1st is a position date. If they don't have a certain date, you know, this exactly date, we can put a remark. That means one month, two months to be arranged. But usually either one. If you put a position date, you don't need to put a position remark. If you put a position remark, you don't need to put a position date. So either one. Hold over, we have a 90 days. And the landlord name, you need to check who is the landlord. Mm, let's do a training purpose, John. And the term, we're looking for the 12 months, one year. The payment, we need a monthly. Payment, we use a check. Rental application, yes. Deposit, yes. Credit check, yes. Reference, yes. Lease agreement, yes. And the employment letter, yes. Buy option, no. Non-smoking policy, yes. And uh, done, this is finished. We go to the next one. Property is for entire property. And uh, square foot. Square footage, we check MLS. This says 776, 776. So we go here, square foot, 7 to 799. And where you get the square footage source is a builder. That means verified by builder, 776. So we can check here as her builder or as per landlord. So you have to verify where you get this resource. So waterfront not apply and the interior we see features. This is new, very, very new, but usually we we don't want to waste too much time. And uh, we just uh, click other. And the other information is from Toronto, is from the MLS, previous one. We have to double check, make sure every information is correct. And the room, you know, even from the room size, they will copy from the previous listing. So if you physically go to this unit, you have to do the measurement. So make sure the room size is correct. So you see they have a quickly do measurement, make sure that you know the room size measurement is correct. Okay, common, because the common is uh, uh, they will won't copy from the previous listing. So you have to do your own. Usually we just see, check the 
you know, this building, what is the feature for this building? And then we write down some highlight. After that, we go to chart GPT. Ask chart GPT help us to write down uh, the client remark for Toronto MLS listing. So chart GPT will help us write down very beautiful, you know, the uh, wording. And uh, what is going to be included? And the next one is broker remark. So I will leave this one for uh, not to take a time for remark. I think everybody, maybe you have to sp spend a little bit of time for the client remark, for the extra inclusion, and also for the broker remark. Broker remark, usually you have to let the agent know, you know, showing lockbox, all the tenants when 24 hours notice, when is the I'm able to do the showing, when it's not, and also what kind of the tenants you're looking for. So this is for the broker remark. For the others, you see there's a lot of information missing. And uh, because this is uh, your name, is a listing agent. So you have to write down your phone number. I know someone, they said, I don't want to be bothered. So you can write down office phone number. So every agent call, office will page you. Otherwise, you can put your own contact number. The commission is a half month rent. M-O-N-T-H, rent. S-P-I-S, seller property information statement, no. And uh, distribute to internet, yes. And the display address on internet, yes. Distributed to DDF, date, uh, date, facility. I forget what, what is another, another D. But anyway, this is to go to the app, go to all the social app or internet. We always should check yes. Permission to contact listing broker to advertising, yes. Even the other brokerage, if they want to promote this unit, they have to get you in written consent. And the occupancy is by tenants right now. And the showing, we need to show, use the showing system. Contact after expired, no. So this is for the mandatory field we are already done. You see there's no any warning uh, icon. The photos, Photos, you have to take a photo for yourself. You cannot just use the MLS previous one because at first they have a, a watermark, that means a copyright. The second one, if this is not a photo you take, you use a photo, you should get the in written consent from the previous agent. If not, they complain you to the trap, you will get a penalty, huge penalty. Don't use the other agent's photo without the consent. And the last one, attachment. Like if you have a schedule, uh, you have a disclosure, you can put here. Other than that, leave blank. For lease, usually we don't need a schedule B for lease. And once you finish all the information, so you can click a preview, just a preview here and a generate. And then you can ask a seller, landlord, sorry, landlord to sign here. This form is exactly the same as 292 MLS data form. So before we spend, a, you know, lots of the agent, we spend a, like a half an hour, one hour, two hour to finish this form. And then we go to MLS to do one again, one more time for this form. So right now we use a column from previous listing and do uh, check out the information is correct. And then we go click a preview. And then we go download, you see download the form, save, download. And once you download the form, you need to ask a landlord to sign this form from the authentic sign. So how to use authentic sign? We will not take authentic sign training today, but I hope you can check from other video. So 45, exactly same on time, very, very on time. Okay. so. Write down your question. I know this is a little bit of a rush. 
uh, for tenant offer for tenant is easy, but uh, you prepare the listing list for landlord is not easy. But uh, I just want to help you quickly give you some idea. And uh, you know where to start, you know where to find the information, you know what form you're going to use. And uh, for the more details, maybe based on the every single scenario, single case, so you can you can treat as uh, differently. Okay, so we will st stop here and uh, we hope you can ask some question and I will stop the record now. <laughs>